Well, hello class. We're here today again with another video for uh, hypothesis testing. So today we're going to be working on our second example for hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing example two. Now let's say that we have a soda machine that produces soda bottles. Let's say that that machine has a mean distribution of ounces inside of the soda bottle of 12 ounces with a sigma of 0.10. Now, in order to test the machine, in the morning, you took a sample of 20 bottles and you notice that that sample gave you a mean of 12.03. So, hypothesis testing, it's sort of like asking yourself a question of, is the machine broken since my mean is higher than my population number? Now, it is very normal for the mean to be different than the population number. As a matter of fact, that's expected because you should never expect the mean to basically, for the sample, to be the same as population. But the question is, is it significantly higher than it, than it should be? So the question that we have for ourselves is, has there been an increase in the amount of soda dispensed by the machine? All right, so let's go through the five steps of hypothesis testing using this example. So step number one, we have to declare our HO and our H1. Now remember, HO is our null hypothesis. The hypothesis depends on the question. Uh, the question says, has there been an increase in the amount of soda? Increase is what we want to know. So we're going to set up our HO as mu less than or equal to 12 and we're going to set up our h1 as mu greater than 12. Because the question says increase, so we're going to put h1 as greater than. All right, for step number two, we need to find our um, alpha, or level of significance. Now, we, let's say that we're going to use 0 0.05. Actually, Let's change it because last time we used 0 0.05 as well. Let's use 0 0.10. All right. Um, for step number three, we need to determine which test we're going to be conducting. Now, in this particular case, we are given the population standard deviation. So we're going to assume normality and we have our sigma. So we're going to use our Z test. So to find our, our Z, we need to use X bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. Okay? All right. So now we go to step number four. On step number four, we need to set up our graph. And I like to set up the graph so that we can visualize what's going on. Once you understand how this works, you don't really need to set up the graph. But um, I like to set it up just so that we understand what we're trying to do here. All right. So in this particular case, since we have our mu greater than 12, we need to set up a rejection area to the right of the center. So we need to find a critical value here, critical value to put in there. All right. Now, we know that our alpha is going to be 0.1. And notice that this is what we call a one-tail test. And it's a one-tail because we're putting only one tail in here. The previous one, in example one, it was a two-tail because we put one on this side and one on this side. All right? Now, this is one tail because the question was, is there an increase? The previous question was, was there a change or is it different? And when it asks you that question, you got to do two tails. Okay? In this case, he's asking you for increase. Now, how are we going to find that critical value? Well, we know that the probability of being on this side of the curve is 0.5, and we know that we want an alpha of 0.1. So what's missing in here is 0.400. And the reason that's missing is because, remember, we have to add up, all of the probabilities have to add up to 1. So we need to find this 0.400 inside our normal distribution table. So we go to the one that says 
areas under normal and then we look for that probability of 0 0.400 inside the table and then we look for the z value on the outside of the table and that is the value that we need to use for our critical value so I'm gonna go inside and look for 0 0.400 All right, notice that 0 0.400 is not available, but we have 0 0.4015. So I'm gonna use a critical value of 1.29. Okay. Yep, 1.29. All right, so. Once we have our critical value, that value is going to tell us whether we're going to be inside or outside that rejection area. So after we do that critical value, we need to run our test statistic. So what if we got to do our z equals x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. Our x bar is 12.03. Our mu is 12. Then we have our sigma, which is... 0 0.10 and then we're going to divide that by square root of sample size which in this case is 20 and even though it would be great if I can do that in my head I can't so let's plug it and hit this baby right here Right, I got 1.34. All right, notice that this 1.34 is to the right of 1.29. So this 1.34 is on this side of the curve. It's on this side because it is to the right of 1.29, zero being the center. As a consequence of that, because this is on the outside, for step number five of hypothesis testing, we're going to say we reject HO. So notice that H1 seems to be correct right now. It's greater than because 1.34 is greater than. Good so far? So now what does that mean for the question that our manager asked us? Has there been an increase in the amount of soda dispensed in the machine? The answer to this is yes. So, manager, call the mechanic. Actually, that was a joke. All right, have a good one. See you guys later.